to grow and develop as individuals and achieve things they never believed that they would be able to achieve. That's a phenomenal yeah. um, sense of satisfaction. It creates a lot of energy and excitement yeah. in the company. Yeah. No, I, I agree, John. Totally agree. Um, so, so, so based on the experiences that you've had at Unipart, and I know also you you participate in a whole lot of other forums more widely, what advice would you have for other aspiring CEOs um, in terms of, well, I suppose that the first question is, you know, is it a role that you think people should, what sort of people should go for this, this sort of role? And, and what, what's, what advice would you have on how to get there? I wish I could tell you now that there are certain characteristics of CEOs, but having met many, yeah. people come from a wide variety of, of backgrounds, uh, and people become CEOs who you might never imagine would do it. So I'm going to be cautious about that, more cautious than I might have been uh, 20 years ago. Um, but in terms of advice, maybe the first one is that leadership is lonely. Um, if you're going to lead, you will be lonely for a period of time, and then the organization should catch up with you, or, or else maybe you're in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> but don't be afraid of being lonely for a while. Yeah. Um, I think born out of my experience, to really believe that out of adversity comes opportunity to be able to see the opportunity in adverse circumstances rather than become overwhelmed by them. Mm. Um, and there are always opportunities. I mean, in, in, in our history, in our company, British Leyland went into a cash crisis every six months. Um, but we saw that as an opportunity to find new solutions and to persuade the company to give us freedom to do things we wouldn't otherwise have done. If those crises hadn't emerged, maybe we would have just got carried along with the wave. Yeah, because yeah, a number of people the number of CEOs I've spoken to actually said they actually quite like to bring on people who've failed at some stage in their life, just with the fact that they have a pattern of success, but ultimately they've faced that and they've come through it. Is that, is that the sort of thing that you're talking about? I remember something my father said to me um, when I'd been quite successful in business for a long time. He said, the thing that worries me most is that you didn't fail early. Um, because you haven't learned how to deal with it or how bad it can get. Yeah. Um, and I've been pretty lucky, really, in that respect, but obviously I've had setbacks, and mm. I'm sure most people do. Um, failure is probably a better teacher than success. Yeah, I agree again. So, so John, w you know, we've been talking about global and sustainability and, and other themes that a sort of number of CEOs have talked about, but we're ultimately, in a, uh, you know, at the moment, we're in a very tough economic situation, but uh, I just you know, get interested in your point of view about how long and the severity uh, you see of the current uh, the sort of credit crunch that we're, we're, under, we're going through in the Western world. Um, and then also maybe your thoughts on, on how to manage through it. Well, <coughs> I think all recessions are different mm. and all recessions are the same because ultimately you come out of them. Um, but Probably people take longer to accept that we're in it. And once things turn around, we're probably slower to recognize that things have turned around. Um, that's sort of what I think I've discovered. <coughs> There's no simple solution here. There's no generic model. It's all situational. I mean, it's best if you can kind of fight your way out of it and work on the principle that out of adversity comes opportunity and see the opportunity rather than get overwhelmed with the problems. But do you think that as you go into a downturn, I mean, is it the first priority is survival and or, you know, to ensure that you will come through the other end and then secondly having an eye on opportunities that, that can arise? Well, the first priority must be survival because if you don't come out, you know, you don't have the chance to realize the opportunities on the other side. But you should always look for the opportunity. There always will be some opportunity in the situation. Nothing goes bad everywhere. I mean, the current downturn, the financial services sector, is going to write off you know, 1.3 trillion and counting. But the energy sector um, is doing extremely well. Um, raw materials are doing really well. There will always be some sector of the market where there will be opportunities. 
and you have to look for them. You won't always be successful, but at least yeah. you should be looking. Because yeah. if you're looking for the opportunities, you're in a, in a kind of more positive state of mind than if you're simply obsessed with the problems. Yeah. And, and just, just if I just dig in a little bit, when you're in that survival mode, see the shift in, can I call it, t understanding that you're in this downturn earlier, w what are the ways that you shift as CEO? You know, is this something about the level that you dig, the, the depth you go into, or how you take decisions? How does it change, John, when you're in a, in a downturn? I think you're always searching to be able to reinterpret today's situation into the future so that people can see possibility yeah. and create conditions under which individuals in the company try harder and believe more yeah. in themselves rather than give up. Because it's that there's nothing that would crush the human spirit more than if the leadership give up. Yeah. And if people look to the leaders of the company to authentically convince them about what is possible. But it's, it has to be authentic. Yeah. But it comes back to the point I made earlier on. Out of adversity comes opportunity. Yeah. And d does, you know, when you're managing it, does it change, you know, the focus from top and bottom line towards cash flow and other management metrics? Do you, do you consciously make a shift? Oh, you definitely make yeah. a shift. I mean, you have to protect the cash. Yeah. And you have to stay out of the clutches of the banks. Yeah. And is there any, th any sort of initiatives that you typically do in a downturn? Uh, the reality is these are well-tried yeah. uh, methods. You have to cut the costs where they aren't going to damage the business if you possibly can. And then you have to look wherever you can to see if you can use your people productively to generate revenue. Yeah. You know, it f for us, we understand how much we've invested in creating this group of really, really committed, motivated people. And so every time you might have to lose somebody is very, very painful mm -hmm. because you can't just replace them with another person. Yeah. You've got to replace years and years of accumulated knowledge and expertise and understanding, all the tacit knowledge that exists, all the domain knowledge that exists, the cost of losing people is much, much higher mm. than many organizations really, really understand. So we should fight very, very hard yeah. to take care of our people. But survival of the company yeah. is obviously in the long-term best interests Everybody. Of, of as many of our stakeholders, of, of all of our stakeholders. Okay. And then just, just more maybe on a, um, a lighter note, John. Yeah. The, um, I mean, you've had a, a, a long career. I mean, could you just share with us, is, is, was there one or two magic moments where you felt, you know, I've <laughs> made a difference here, I've done the right thing, I've made an impact for good? Yes, I think probably a moment I look back on with, with great uh, pleasure is standing on the stage at, uh, at Warwick University at the end of a four-hour-long theatrical show, which was basically putting a prospectus for the buy-in of Unipart to music, but involved a very authentic and comprehensive explanation of the risks and opportunities that faced the company. Yeah. Um, and standing in front of thousands of our employees and their families and giving them the opportunity, if they wanted to, uh, to invest in the company. And then seeing the vast majority of uh, my fellow employees actually choose to buy shares in the company. Uh, it was that moment standing yeah. in front of them and Fantastic. telling them, you know, we don't need you to buy shares for us to privatize. We want you to have the opportunity uh, to do so. Uh, that was a great moment. Yeah, no, a proud moment. And then, John, in terms of advice for other CEOs, any other advice, you know, advice you'd have liked to have had before you took up the job? Hmm. Maybe, maybe you don't have thoughts, thoughts have you. Be careful of sticking to something that you've learnt over time without re-questioning it. Yeah. And if you can find a wise mentor who will challenge you and help you to rethink maybe some of your most dearly held beliefs, that might be a good thing to do. Okay. And